Asteroid 2024 YR4 turned what should have been a routine sky survey discovery into a rare real-world practice run for planetary defense. Most new near-Earth asteroids pop up, get a few more measurements, and then quickly slide into the harmless category. YR4 didn't do that. For a short period, its risk estimate climbed high enough on the Torino impact hazard scale that scientists treated it as a genuine potential impact case, at least until refined observations ruled Earth out. The situation was never a movie-style panic, but it was still meaningful because it showed how the global response system behaves when the numbers stop looking routine. In this video, we'll break down what happened, what scientists learned, and why it still matters. Let's get started. YR4 entered the picture on December 27th, 2024, when it was first reported by the NASA-funded Atlas Survey from its site in Rio Hurtado, Chile. NASA's Center for Near-Earth Object Studies also noted that the asteroid had made a close approach to Earth on December 25th, which is why it became bright enough to be detected by surveys at all. That detail matters because it hints at the core problem with impact risk early on. Sometimes we first spot an object after it has already swung by, and that means we're starting with limited tracking data while it's already heading out and fading. At first, there was no siren moment. The threat was mostly an information problem. When an asteroid is newly discovered, astronomers don't know a single perfect orbit. They have a range of possible orbits, based on limited early data. Like drawing a future path with a thick marker instead of a sharp pencil. With each night of tracking, that range usually shrinks, and the scary options disappear. In YR4's case, the uncertainty region for a predicted close approach on December 22nd, 2032 did tighten, but Earth stayed inside the region long enough for the calculated probability to rise instead of fall. NASA's Sentry Monitoring System flagged the object quickly, and CNEOs explained why the probability can climb in situations like this. As the uncertainty region narrows, the fraction of that region that overlaps Earth can briefly increase, even though the asteroid itself hasn't turned toward us in any physical sense. Then YR4 crossed a key line, 1%. In impact monitoring, that is a big threshold because it is no longer just a rounding error. On January 27, 2025, CNEOs reported that the impact probability had surpassed 1% and the object reached Torino scale level 3. Level 3 doesn't mean disaster is coming. It means a close encounter that deserves serious tracking because a localized destructive impact is possible in the small chance that the orbit lines up the wrong way. And that's what made YR4 unusual. Torino 3 is rare because it requires two things at the same time, an object large enough to cause real damage, and a probability high enough to be treated as more than background noise. Cineos even points out how uncommon that rating is. Some reporting during the episode described YR4 as the first asteroid to ever reach Torino 3, with Apophis still holding the record for the highest rating reached at level 4 back in 2004. Whether you frame it as first or simply extremely uncommon, the point is the same. This was not a typical week on the risk lists. During the most uncertain period, the public numbers moved around, and that's normal too. News coverage at the time reported that the odds climbed to around 3% before later observations erased the Earth impact scenario. This is one of the easiest parts to misunderstand. A rising probability is often a sign that the system is learning fast, not that the danger is spiralling out of control. It usually means the cloud of possible paths is shrinking, and Earth is still sitting inside that cloud. As soon as the cloud shifts a little, the risk can collapse. What happened next is the part that made YR4 meaningful. The response was calm, fast and structured. The International Asteroid Warning Network IAWN, issued an official potential impact notification on January 29, 2025. That notice isn't meant to frighten the public. It's a coordination tool. It tells observatories and agencies around the world that an object has crossed a technical threshold and that more data is needed quickly. 
It's basically the global system saying, everyone who can help, please focus your best instruments on this target while we still can. Then the clock started ticking differently. YR4 was already moving away from Earth and growing dim, which meant the best observations had to happen soon, while it was still within reach of powerful telescopes. Cineos noted that the asteroid was being tracked by multiple facilities, including the Very Large Telescope in Chile, the Danish Telescope, and Magdalena Ridge Observatory in New Mexico, and that larger and larger telescopes would be required as it faded. That's the side of planetary defense most people never see. Before you talk about deflection missions, you have to win the visibility battle. If you can't measure the orbit precisely, you can't make confident decisions at all. As follow-up data poured in, the orbit solution improved, and the uncertainty region in 2032 shrank until Earth was no longer inside the dangerous slice. NASA concluded the object poses no significant impact risk to Earth in 2032 and beyond. The Torino rating dropped back to zero, which is the usual end state for these early, maybe, objects once the math is anchored by enough observations. In a way, the anticlimax is the point. The system is designed so that most potential impacts die quietly when better measurements arrive, but YR4 didn't lose all of its intrigue. Once Earth was ruled out, the updated orbit still left a small chance of a lunar impact on the same date in 2032. NASA's planetary defense team published updates that put the moon impact probability into the low single digits, based on improved observations, including James Webb Space Telescope data. ESA also tracked the continuing moon scenario, and noted that the odds would remain fairly stable until the asteroid returns to view, and can be observed again in a better window. It didn't create urgency, but it did keep the asteroid in scientific focus. Once the urgency faded, scientists shifted to characterizing the asteroid itself, and that's where the observation campaign paid off. NASA's updated size estimate, improved using infrared data, narrowed YR4 to roughly 53 to 67 meters across, about the size of a 15-story building. That size range matters because it sits in a tricky middle ground. NASA notes that in this bracket, an airburst is a likely scenario if a similar asteroid entered Earth's atmosphere, and the actual damage depends heavily on size, composition, and entry geometry. In plain terms, it's big enough to matter, small enough to be hard to study, and common enough that we need solid models for it. Another standout property was how fast it spins. YR4's rotation period is about 19.5 minutes, a value referenced in technical analysis connected to web observations. Fast rotation can hint at internal strength. A very loose rubble pile has a harder time staying intact as spin increases, though nature can surprise us with cohesive dust, boulders, and weird shapes that hold together better than expected. The main point is that YR4 is not just a dot with a date attached. It's a physical object with real structure, and those physical traits are exactly what matter if you ever have to model mitigation. Composition was also part of the follow-up story. Spectral observations pointed to a stony asteroid, with S-type as the most likely match, and L-type or K-type sometimes discussed, depending on the dataset. The key takeaway is that it looks rocky and silicate-rich, not icy. That matters for long-term tracking, because rocky bodies absorb sunlight and re-radiate heat in ways that can slowly shift their orbits over years through subtle effects. Those tiny forces usually don't decide next month's risk level, but they do matter when you're projecting positions years into the future. The possible moon impact adds a second layer of interest. The moon has no atmosphere, so there's no airburst and no gentle breakup. If YR4 hit the lunar surface, it would excavate a fresh crater and throw out a debris plume that could be observed by orbiters and large telescopes. That would turn a risk calculation into a clean, measurable experiment in crater formation and ejector behavior. It also connects to a more modern concern. The Earth-Moon system is getting busier with spacecraft, and understanding how debris might behave around lunar distances is becoming more relevant as more missions operate there. 
And that brings us back to why this whole episode mattered. Why R4 wasn't important because it almost hit Earth. It was important because it showed the system behaving the way it is supposed to behave under real conditions. Simulations and tabletop exercises are useful, but they cannot fully recreate the tension of a real object with real uncertainty, especially one that is getting fainter with each passing week. Why R4 forced quick coordination, quick observation and careful public messaging, and then it delivered the clean outcome everyone wants. The risk dropped to zero once the data became strong enough. It also underlined why new detection missions matter so much. The earlier you find a risky object, the longer you can track it, and the faster the orbit uncertainty collapses. NASA's upcoming infrared space telescope, NEO Surveyor, is designed to strengthen that early warning capability and is scheduled to launch no earlier than September 2027, according to JPL. ESA's planned NEOMIR concept is aimed at spotting asteroids that are hard to see from the ground, especially ones coming from near the sun's direction, where glare hides them. YR4 is a perfect example of why those upgrades matter. A few extra weeks of high quality tracking can be the difference between uncertainty and clarity. YR4 will keep being refined as new observation windows open, especially as it returns to better viewing geometry in 2028. By the time 2032 arrives, we should have a far tighter prediction, whether that ends as a clean miss or a rare lunar impact. Either way, the episode already served its purpose. It gave the world a controlled, meaningful stress test of planetary defense, and it left us better prepared for the next time a new asteroid's first set of numbers makes everyone look twice.